Here, we'll be discussing information reporting systems and techniques, specifically the SOAP note. Let's start with a few general tips for clinical writing. Anytime you use assessments, you want to make sure that you use the full name of the assessment upon first mention. Any mention thereafter, feel free to use acronyms or abbreviations that are associated with the assessment. Be sure to present all information in chronological sequence. This allows for readability for the reader and creates a fluid document. Be certain that you use third person and past tenses with all forms of clinical writing. Steer clear of contracted verb forms. Any form of verb that requires an apostrophe, you want to steer away from. However, there are exceptions to most rules. So there, it, there are occasions where we use contracted verb forms within reason. If you have no other way of communicating or phrasing the particular phrase or sentence, there are, there are occasions where we use contracted verb forms. We're speaking within the context of behaviors most times. Be sure that you express all information that is presented in professional behavioral terms that coincide together. Be certain that you steer clear of language that creates ambiguity and leads or offers misinterpretation for the reader. Be certain that you don't use exaggerations. This can often create a bias for the reader and it doesn't it excludes objectivity within the document and that's something that you want to avoid. Be certain that you use correct spelling, grammar and punctuation at all times. Your sentences are complete. You're not writing in incomplete sentences or phrases. Moving in moving away from conversational style and into a technical or clinical style of writing can be challenging for some, but it's it's doable. It takes practice. However, it is something that you want to set as a goal for yourself as you become proficient in the skill of clinical writing. Be certain that all of the data presented is relevant and ties directly into the performance observed. Be certain that you report both strengths and needs. Strengths are important because they support areas or identified areas of need. We all have strengths and needs and the strengths could certainly support us in attacking or addressing some of the needs identified at some course in the clinical process. The key phrase to remember here in any type of written documentation is, if it's not documented, it didn't happen. This is often used as a writing mantra in the speechy world as a safeguard of protection for the population served and their clinicians. Let's move right into the, into the SOAP note and talk about a couple of its primary functions. One of them is that it enables clinicians to monitor the clinical process across time and implement any necessary changes immediately. The other is that it serves as a communication tool between other service providers. As we begin with the subjective statement, often referred to as the S statement, this section is typically a brief introduction or overview of how the client presents. In a treatment SOAP, this could include present behavior or status. It may also highlight changes thereof. Be mindful that client or patient presentation changes over time. Therefore, this statement should not be identical from one SOAP to the next. 
to the next. In a diagnostic SOAP, the clinician should include identifying information, background, and any new information. Remarks made by the client and or family relevant to the clinical process and client behavior and disposition. In both types of soaps, the clinician should be mindful to avoid redundancy within a given soap and across soaps from session to session. Additionally, remarks related to punctuality can be excluded unless it ties directly to client performance. We don't necessarily want to make comments about the client arrived on time as this is already sort of implied and an expected um, an expectation of the agreement in the clinical relationship. It doesn't really have any specific tie to clinical performance overall. Keep in mind that the subjective statement is a setup for the discussion to follow specifically relative to performance. Following the yes statement is the objective statement or the O statement. Here is where the clinician outlines the target objectives addressed in a given session. Only the objectives addressed should be documented. This means that if the clinician planned to target an objective, but time didn't quite allow for it to be addressed, it does not belong in the old statement for that particular session. Raw data is typically reported here. If the clinician chooses to convert the raw data, she or he is within his or her right to do so. Also, be mindful of any supports provided to elicit this particular skill. As this was part of the client performance for that particular objective. When this information is, is omitted, it suggests that the skill was performed at the level of independence. And you don't want to be misleading here in terms of what the client actually needed to support, to be supported in that particular skill. As we move into the analysis, or assessment statement, often referred to as the A statement. The clinician details discussion and or interpretation of the reported data from the S and O statements. The clinician may draw conclusions, make clinical judgments, express clinical opinions, and describe rationales related to client performance. There should also be detailed discussion around the effectiveness of reinforcements and stimuli used and the provision of specific supports and techniques or strategies used to support the individual in this particular session. The clinician may also consider discussing what participation actually looked like, looked like for the client and how it specifically tied into clinical outcomes. If there are any potential modifications that the clinician would like to introduce in the A statement, they may choose to do so here. Lastly, as we move into the plan statement or the P statement, it is dictated by the outcomes of this particular session. It is not intended for the clinician to restate goals or objectives here, but it is intended to have discussion around the rationale for continuing or discontinuing a given goal or objective. Essentially, what are the clinician's next moves in the clinical process? The clinician may also choose to slightly detail any modifications introduced in, in the A statement. You want to think of the P statement as the recommendations for the next session. That's it for now. Until next time.